Good morning, neighbors. If you are one of them, sing along. And if you want to be one of them, sing along. There are people almost everywhere whose hearts are all aflame. By the fire that fell at Pentecost, which made them all acclaim, it is burning now within my heart. All glory to his name. And I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. Though these people may not learn it be, nor boast of worldly fame, they have all received their Pentecost through faith in Jesus' name and are telling now both far and wide his power is yet the same. And I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them, one of them, one of them. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them, one of them, one of them. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. They were gathered in the upper room, all praying in his name. They were baptized in the Holy Ghost, and power for service came. Now what he did for them that day, he'll do for you the same. And I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them, one of them, one of them. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them, one of them, one of them. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. Oh, come, my brother, seek this blessing that will cleanse your heart from sin. That will start the joy bells ringing and will keep the soul aflame. It is burning now within my heart. All glory to his name. And I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them, one of them, one of them. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them, one of them, one of them. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. Amen. And I pray that's everyone's testimony, that they can declare I'm one of them. William Seymour at the great Azusa Street Revival, when he would speak upon the Holy Ghost, he'd tell them, if there is a doubt within your heart, then the transformation is not complete. You must be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. A lot of people, they just stop. They believe, well, I'm saved. But the scripture says, have you received the Holy Ghost since you first believed? You know, there is a promise, not only that, that you are baptized and have your sins washed away, but you shall be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. If you're cleansed from sin, not that we don't make mistakes still, but if you're cleansed, you're, you are a willing vessel, a clean vessel. It is a promise. Uh, it's a treasure hidden in earthen vessels. So I thought we'd go into that. Acts chapter 1 and verse 10. You know, this is right after uh, Jesus ascends. And, you know, and these angels, and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. So the disciples are looking up, and these angels have come down. And who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. 
And when they had entered, they went up into the upper room where they were staying. Peter, James, John, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas the son of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication, with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brothers. So I think this is interesting. It's not they're not just standing in one spot. When they look up, they are. They're saying, hey, what are you doing? These angels, what are you doing? You know, he'll come back again, but they have a job to do. It's not, and you know, Peter was given the keys to a kingdom. You know, this isn't just stop and stare up and say, come on, come on. When are they coming back? It's you have a job to do. You have a, uh, a calling to fulfill. So they come back. All the things that Jesus had taught them was preparing them for this day. Did they all understand everything? No, they didn't. But I think it's interesting. They journey the Sabbath day's journey. So they travel back and they go into the upper room. You know, there there is something there. You know, it, it takes something out of them to do this. And they all continue with one accord, them and the women, and even the mother of Jesus, Mary. She, they're all there, and his Jesus's brothers. You know, Mary's uh, children. They're all there, continuing with one accord. You know, they have one goal in mind. We have to have this one goal in mind. Why do we need? We need the comforter. We need this promise that Jesus has given us. So they came together and said, you know, other things, let's just let the things of this world pass away. Right now, we're co we need to concentrate on this. This is our job right now, to be in one accord and pray and uh, for this comforter to come. And then in chapter 2, verse 1, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Again, we're a one accord, one accord, one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. You know, this wasn't a, uh, you know, they, they actually, you know, they're making a de declaration. This is the day of Pentecost. Before it was just, you know, it was the beginning. Now it's, this is, it's fully come. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, which is cloven tongues of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. You know, the, and the, if you continue reading, you'll read that the other people that heard, oh, these men must be drunk. They had no understanding because they these disciples that come in one accord, we have this understanding, we need this. But the earthly people, the worldly people, they're just like, ah, this is ridiculous. And you always look ridiculous often to, because God is trying to humble you. And you, when you're following him in a, in a spiritual sense, the natural people around you will be like, that's ridiculous. Why would you live like this? Why would you do this? This Because they're not in one accord with you. But I pray that the believers can all be in one accord and one understanding. This is something that we need. And I think it's interesting because, you know, you can look at it, oh, this is just these people. They got this. You know, they're all in one accord in the upper room. But Peter and James and all these men, they just burst out of this upper room sharing this gospel. You know, they're they're not ashamed. And they're just, you know, they're not even, they're like, whoa, whoa. I mean, I, these people are hearing their own languages out of these men who are just these simple men. You know, it's like me coming out and bursting out here speaking all these different foreign languages, testifying to people. But they can understand. You know, if I burst out of here speaking Japanese, everybody, well, what's wrong with him? But a Japanese man was like, oh, I know exactly what he's saying. And it may seem like we're almost not included, but I just sang the song, I'm one of them. And it's the same chapter in verse 37. They're speaking about this other group of people. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? You know, they've heard this. What do we do? We're lost. You guys are saved and you're, and you're okay, but we're lost. What do we do? Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You know, you, this could be yours too, but this is what you have to do. You must. You know, Jesus told them, You must be born again. There's no other way. You have to do this. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will, will call. And with many other words, he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. 
we're living in a perverted world, a perverted generation. But yeah, even back then, they're dealing with a lot of the same things. It's just getting more pronounced. There's a lot more people in this world too. It's more pronounced, and it just there's no shame. But Peter said, you know, you must be convicted, you must repent, and you must be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and have the sins washed away. Then, when you are clean, you can be filled, and you can become one of them. So God bless you all, and hope to see you again.